Hey, what's going on? I am going to be doing a reaction to the PlayStation Showcase. I was not able to watch it live. However, this one in particular has not been spoiled for me um, because I, uh, it, I was busy when it was happening live. Um, I headed on my way home. I uh, haven't looked at anything, so I am watching it live. Um, as an archive stream, just so you know, while, while I'm streaming this, um because this might be one long past broadcast stream on my twitch so if you're wondering what the uh plan is for today because i usually i usually don't stream until the weekend uh that's been, just been consistent recently but when uh things like this happen i try to do my reactions as best as i can um some of the smaller stuff that playstation does you know like their what do they call it um playstation they're not directs they're something else i don't know um they they sometimes do them for specific games now for like Horizon um Forbidden West and the new Ratchet and Clank game they've done single uh you know showcases for those um sometimes if I'm not available or if it's just not interesting to me I just skip those ones altogether I was trying to see if um any of the spawn trap members were uh, going to be able to do this it is tough though when it's announced at the last minute during a weekday like during during the middle of the week um because it's just not possible for us to plan ahead um for this um so uh so it's just me that's available to do a recording so i'm just doing the solo on my own channel so uh all, all the stuff that's announced here is new to me so it's there's my genuine reaction even though it's not live nothing's been spoiled for me i haven't seen it online um as of recording the live stream on twitch um, it's very different. I want to catch up on a lot of stuff and really uh, streaming is the only way for me to just try to cram everything into one stream here. Um, so I right after this, I am going to be re uh, watching and reacting to the Canadian federal leaders debates, both the French and English, the French being English, uh, being translated in English. Uh, the English ones being going to be live streamed later. So I think by the time I'm done uh, the PlayStation reaction and the French leaders debate reaction, the English one will be live. I know it's different. I'm doing a, a political uh, live stream reaction, which is uh, I think I've only done maybe one or two uh, presidential U.S. presidential debate reactions. Maybe um, I live in Canada. We are having a snap election uh, very soon. Um, early um, voting is on uh, this weekend, actually. So I'm going to be voting this weekend. Um, so, yes, I have my mindset on who I'm voting for. Uh, and this, like, it's really, I'm, I'm voting for a local. Can't, like, it, it's all like, um, when you're thinking about this, you're thinking more local. Um, but... Uh, the local candidate I support just coincides with the party uh, um, leader for the party that I, I support here. So um, so it it, it kind of goes hand in hand for me. Um, so yes, I, I know who I'm voting for. I know what party I'm voting for. I know, um, I already know what I'm doing. Uh, but it um, doesn't hurt um, to to watch this stuff and get a little bit more informed and, and, and getting everybody's uh, takes and what this debate is and knowing who you're voting for um so i will not get into my politics on this side of the stream uh for the playstation showcase that's going to be on twitch uh, i don't plan to archive those streams anywhere because really the youtube channels that i have none of them really fits that stuff and it, it definitely doesn't fit with spawn trap um and i think i'm the only one who's like um really open with my politics on uh in our whole group there so um yeah so it doesn't fit anywhere uh i might leave it as past uh, obviously this whole stream is going to be a past broadcast on my twitch so it's available for as long as um the expiration date is for videos on demand um for past broadcasts on twitch so they will expire eventually so if you're watching this now enjoy it because it's not going to be on here forever Unless I decide to archive it for some reason on this on Twitch, um, so yeah, there's two debates. One happened yesterday. I missed it. I just didn't realize it was happening, and then I didn't realize there's one today too that's going to be happening after while we're uh, 
uh, like after I'm going to be reacting to that. Then after that, um, I don't have a whole lot of time tomorrow to work on the weekend recap. So I'm going to see if I can squeeze in. If you don't know what that is, uh, the weekend recap, I've been posting weekly recap videos to let you know what games you can play for free every weekend. Um, so I've been, I think I've been doing it for like almost 30 weeks straight now. Even though last week it didn't really feel like it was necessary. There wasn't a whole lot to play. But this week, there's a lot of new stuff to update you about. So I'm going to be making the whole list. I'm going to be going through what game deals I've bookmarked to update on my Discord channel. Um, in between the leaders debates and the uh, weekend recap video, I might take a break and then come back live and do that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, and... The, the point is to try to get the at least the list going so I have something to reference while I'm recording the video. But hopefully everything goes smoothly. I can make the list. I can record the video. And then I have time to edit Friday night uh, after I get home. So that way I can go vote on Saturday and um, have it scheduled to go live that day. So I don't have to worry about it. And uh, then maybe maybe stream for longer saturday saturday is my pokemon day we moved it uh I, I stream pokemon games with my friend court ftw we typically do it sunday nights we moved it to saturdays if you want to see us play some uh some random pokemon games we're playing pokemon revolution online it's fan made uh online pokemon mmo which is very interesting uh, i'm enjoying it so uh we've been hooked on that until the new games come out uh so yeah that's just brief rundown of what the stream's going to be today but you're probably watching on youtube so you don't care about all that extra stuff you just want to see what my reaction is to playstation showcase we're going to do that if you want to see uh, more reactions like this uh and my my thoughts on like what um what gets sh um showcased or announced um i do this stuff on my main youtube channel but a lot of that stuff is being pushed over to our new podcast channel called spawn trap you go to thespawntrap.com, um, or if you search YouTube for Spawn Trap Podcast, you'll probably find it. Um, but we do live reaction videos when we can. Our biggest thing was E3. We did the E3 events, like pretty much all of it. Um, and uh, But mostly, we record podcasts. So uh, Spawn Trap is primarily a podcast channel. Um, we have a new podcast going up soon. And speaking of politics, we're going to be talking about Activision Blizzard and the uh, lawsuit that the state of California is, is uh, um, filing against them for sexual harassment and all, all that other stuff for its employees. Um, we go into very deep and um, uh, very uh, maybe controversial topics and discussions on that podcast. And it, as such, it goes longer than typical. We usually aim for an hour. That was about two hours. Um, the video itself is uploaded. I haven't prepped everything for release. So hopefully by the weekend it will be up. Um, but you can watch our previous episodes on that YouTube channel. There's all, it's also an audio form on uh, Google Podcast. Um, why am I blanking on the other ones? Spotify, Anchor. The only one I think a major one that we're not on is Apple. Uh, so we're not part of uh, iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Um, so that's something I got to look into. But for I, I think you want to see the video versions of the podcast for the best experience. So go subscribe on YouTube there. And we also started a new uh, off-topic podcast called Hit Pause MCU. It's also on the Spawn Trap channel it's all about marvel cinematic universe movies and tv shows that make up uh those marvel uh inspired um stuff so that's all we talk about we're talking about right now um what if the new series on disney plus we were supposed to record a new podcast uh last weekend um everybody had last minute conflicts so hopefully we can that's another reason why i want to get the weekend recap video done this week or um, uh, tonight, so that maybe I can schedule a last minute podcast um, recording this weekend with everyone. So that way we can get a new podcast up discussing the new last three episodes of What If. Um, that show is fantastic. 
But let's talk about the games. Let's see what PlayStation is showing off today. It's as a, this is a PS5 showcase. It doesn't say how long it is, but I guess we'll find out on YouTube. Nap. So this is a archive live stream, so it might not start right at the beginning. It says an hour, but I don't think it's actually an hour. Oh, it might actually be an hour. Okay, let's see here. So we'll see. The other thing is, I haven't eaten. I came straight home and start, sat down and started recording. So, I have Subway. My, my sandwich is probably cold at this point. Because <laughs> I've been talking so long and I've been prepping and setting up. So, we'll see. Can I fast forward? There we go. Okay. So, uh, let's see if PlayStation gives me a reason to buy a PS5 um, anytime soon. Because I'm, to be honest, I'm looking at that Master Chief Xbox Series X, even though I own a Series S. I'm looking at a 4K TV. I'm on a Series X. Maybe I'll finally sell my Xbox One. Or the, uh, and or the two, um, Xbox 360s I have in this house. Ooh. That's a good song choice. I was thinking about covering the song when um, Wonder Woman was coming out. By the way, check youtube.com slash uncertain sound if you want uh, music that uh, I don't really work on anymore. Picked up my guitar for the, like, the first time in months the other day. Immediately snapped a string. I had to order new strings. This is the Wonder Woman version. The fuck? This is this is the uh, orchestral remix they did for the Wonder Woman trailer. This is such a good version too. There's some. Is this an auto chess game? Because they they keep showing like chess pieces. Uh, it's like, um, yeah, they keep showing test pieces, but it looks like a heist game. Sorry, I'm going to be like, off screen a little bit eating. Can this... I have no clue if this is a heist game or a chess game or both. It's so good. The music and the sound. Oh, this is Horizon? That's not make sense. Oh, this is just... <sighs> this is a trailer for PlayStation. Granted, that was pretty epic. But... You know... <laughs> was it necessary? <laughs> I actually don't know what games are showing off. President and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment. And welcome to the PlayStation Showcase. At PlayStation, we Hi, Jim Ryan. pushing boundaries and setting the benchmark for creativity and excellence in entertainment. We always loved the opportunity to speak directly with our community. The new technology in PS5 enables that red controller looks so nice. I want one, even though I don't have a PS5. Compelling worlds, showcasing their creative vision as storytellers. We've never been more grateful for the PlayStation community. So thank you for allowing us time to share some significant updates and brand new content. So without further ado, let's look at some new and amazing games. New Star Wars game? Oh shoot, I should have I should have shut off my uh, AC. That is what the Sith need. Alright, I'm actually gonna turn it off. They 
promised power. Now they wield it. We face the greatest Sith in generations. They must be stopped. Whoa! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. So another remake for PS5. So waiting on those exclusives. It's um Blue Monday going to be the theme for the showcase because I I approve. Oh, Bayonetta. Wait, did the third one even come out on Switch yet? Oh, no, this isn't Bayonetta. It looks very Bayonetta-esque. I say that as somebody who's never played Bayonetta. I feel like every um, Japanese game trailer I've seen is like very similar to each other but I realize as I say that a lot of American uh, or Western uh, game trailers are also very similar to each other. They follow the same similar themes and, um, and like template, right? There was a time where it seemed like every trailer had to have like the same dubstep song playing in the trailer. I will say, like, most, um, most Japanese-style games don't really, um, like, I think they look cool and amazing all the time. What gets the skin disconnecting? Um, oh, my mouse. Um, like, they, like, this looks cool, right? Um, but usually the gameplay and stuff like that just doesn't seem interesting to me. This looks like the opposite of that. So this doesn't look like a JRPG at all. It looks like an action game, which is right up, up my alley. It doesn't really look hack and slash either. It looks like you're... There's like quick actions and... There's quick actions and it looks like there's planning and countering and stuff. Project Eve. Um, is it exclusive? So this looks cool. This is this is one that I, uh, looks really good. I'll capture in PS5. Did not say PS4. So the question is: Is it on other consoles and is it on PC? 
It was just on PS5. I don't know if I'd be a, if I'd buy a PS5 just for that game though. This is the new Tiny Tina game. We've already seen this. Sorry, that was gross. I love the music though. Um. You know, some of you may be asking, Tina, why are there guns in a fantasy world? And I am just so glad. I don't play Borderlands game. <laughs> I don't play Borderlands games, and. I'm not fond of Gearbox in general, but it looks cool, I guess. Loot. Can show the other kind of loot. Yeah, loot and loot. I feel like um, the people who play th these games are the same people who complain and be like, I like, I like realism in my games. Like whenever they like, they think something's like a political statement or um, like you're they're trying to a game developer is trying to force a different opinion or um, something that somebody doesn't like. Like this isn't this isn't uh, historically accurate. I need realism in my games, and then they play border. Like, do you? I'll let you in on a secret that I'm a pretty big deal. No big deal. We are getting out of this city, Homer. I promise we'll go somewhere that loves cats. Aww. I was just uh, is this stray? If it is, we haven't seen any humans in those in those trailers yet. I think this is, um, no, this is that other game with the weird title. I can't remember what it's called. Oh my god. Of course, when I'm streaming while eating, I forget how to eat. I can't remember what this is called. Cause I'm like, yeah, that character looks familiar. I think it was E3 they showed this. Asuka. Who's there? Well, technically not first. Well, not what you would call first, anyway. I swear to God, asshole, show yourself. Show myself. I'm sure. Where are you? So You're aggressive. Here at the end of your arm. Oh, hello. Yes. Okay. It's a snack. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons, and oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. Did I just do that? We did. I just moved it with my freaking mind. <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic. Kill jacked up beast. I don't get the premise of this game. No, you're just being ridiculous. Oh, that's too far. Good to know there was a line. I, it looks cool and it looks fun, but I don't know if I get the story. You are the only hope we have. Special. You're the one that's planning on facing off with Sila. Tanta Sila is the strongest and most formidable of all the Tantas. You will be doing our land a great service by killing her. Damn. 
Yeah, for spoken. No, it was a weird title. Pray. No name for a demon. I am the one you seek. The one and only Tanta Sila. Cool. I think this might be an exclusive. I don't remember. Wish they would say in the trailer. Rainbow Six. Oh, this is the new one they um. Hostage situations. They announced. Biological weapons. Now we face the greatest terror our world has ever known. Yeah, this was the one that was called um. Um, quarantine or something. I think it was supposed to be called quarantine, and then they changed the name after the pandemic. <laughs> I mean, for this game, quarantine seems like it makes more sense than extraction. But I get why they changed the name. I'm surprised there hasn't been um, another Ubisoft forward yet because they said there was going to be it more this year. We're nearing the end of the year. Sad to say, but yeah. January, all right. All done eating. I have some chips, but I'm going to save those for the leaders today. Oh, Alan Wake. I think this was leaked yesterday. Just ran into one on the ferry. Famous artist, no less. Alice? Alice? My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down. I still haven't played this. Last night I woke up to a nightmare. I was missing a week. What had happened to me? I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it. With it, I could save myself. <laughs> I could save Alice. Carl Stucky, pleased to meet you. My name is Ellen. <laughs> I don't know why I found that funny. <clears throat> PS5 and PS4. Okay. Another remake and not even exclusive to PS5. There we go. GTA 5 remaster, right? I think it's a remaster. Or maybe not. Maybe they're just releasing the PS5 version. Yeah, improved graphics. It's crazy that this game is spanning three generations of game consoles. And they're not working on a new one. I feel like they're never going to release GTA 6. <laughs> I don't know if they really need to, because this game's still a top seller. They can just do the Fortnite model, or Fortnite Among Us model, and just keep updating this.
which you know, not necessarily a bad thing, but I, I feel like I would be more excited to play a, a GTA 6 than GTA 5. Although, anytime my friend group suggests, hey, you want to play GTA 5? I'm like, fuck yeah. So, <laughs> I just, it's just never in the, you know, forefront of my mind um, to play GTA 5 when there's so many other games I need to play. More zombies. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, this game looks really weird, but cool. I don't remember what it's called. Wait, is this the same game? I think it is. Was this the one that that um, that developer was like super excited to talk about? She was like really uh, bubbly and cheerful about it. When forced to face it. Still your fear. I will be her salvation. Sorry. This is so trippy. <laughs> Yeah, Ghostwire Tokyo. I, it's amazing how many games I just forgot about. There just haven't been up, updates about them. And there's like so many other games have come out since then. Or have been the topic of discussion, right? It's like, oh yeah, there's all these other games to look forward to as well. Ooh, new Marvel game? Or a a, an existing Marvel game. I lost my, oh, this is uh, Avengers. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy, that's right. I'm excited for this one too. The matriarch wishes to share it with you. Oh, this is the Church of Truth? I think it's what it's called. What's wrong with you? Oh, I think Yeah, I think I'm having a heart attack. Cease this at once. Uh, fine. <laughs> Osmo! Cosmo! Yes! Yes! During that ritual with the priest, they kept That's the Cosmo that I wanted in the movies. funky juice or something. Or join the cult. So let us investigate for you. Always gitch. Yes! He's Russian too, yes! Oh my god, they're putting out like all the best parts of this game. It sounds bad. It is. Is um Is Quasar and all those people in here? Did they show Mantis? So this seems like it's heavily inspired by the original comics for this team. The original comics for this team. <laughs> Nova, yeah. This is the Nova Core. Uh, you don't need to sell me anymore, okay? I'm already in. That was completely intentional. The Milano's on her way. Thanks, bud. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm already sold. I'm very sold. We're back to Ghostwire Tokyo. No? Oh, uh, this is a blood hunt? Um, I thought... Hold on. I just looked... I've never played a vampire game, but I just looked up, um... 
think there was a reason why I didn't want to get this game. The original game was developed by Don't Nod. I wanna know about the franchise. Legacy. This is, I can't remember if this game's free to play or not. If it is, I'm excited to try it out. Battle Royale vam Vampires just sounds interesting. Vampire to masquerade. So th these are different games. Like, different game fa franchises. Wait, is this a tabletop RPG called Vampire the Masquerade? This is like, um... Something bl blood bowl like I have no had no idea about blood bowl and when that I learned about that it blew my mind it's like vampire the masquerade now yeah that you can never leave death loop yeah death loop looks interesting too bunch of spaced out science nerds brainwashed cultists flinging bombs whatever these guys are doing all spewing eons bullshit so how come i don't remember oh because okay so they're published by activision that's why i didn't want to play them who are these people what do they want with me but Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt is published by the developer, Shark Mob. So it's not part of Activision at all? Even more so. It is free to play as well. Awesome. <laughs> so Activision doesn't have rights to the uh, the pro intellectual property of Vampire the Masquerade. So it's just a, it's a licensed IP to them. Cause so Shark Mob's just it's just Shark Mob for the for the Battle Royale game Blood Hunt. Good. I'm definitely getting copyright claims for this stream. Like the focus on horror games here with Halloween coming up. <coughs> There's nothing that explicitly says exclusive on any of these, so it's it's just hard to say. Because you put them on the, it could be like Nintendo strategy, put them on a PlayStation showcase. So you think of this game, you think P PS5, but they could also be on P uh, on a PC. So. 
Cool. So you're, you're um, possessing animals. My god, this game looks gorgeous. Very colorful. I've never um, been a fan of that art style where it looks like it's someone's nose is just like a piece of clay that's just stuck to their face that has no nose. <laughs> Are you know what I'm talking about? Like just a very different darker color nose to the rest of their face. Chia! This is very, um, very similar theme in their, like, um, what are they called? Interstitials or whatever, um, to the PS5 console reveal. The same sort of theme. New Uncharted or Remix? Remastered, yeah. PS5 and PC! There you go! Not only do I have these on PS4 and I haven't played them yet. Like, well, I played, I played uh, a bit of the first one. And this came out on PS3, right? The original one? <laughs> came out on PS3? So I have them on PS4. So, it's on my list of stuff to play for the PS4. My next game on the or my- I gotta finish the Horizon Zero Dawn DLC, then playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. Then I'm playing, uh, something else, who knows. Uh, Uncharted's on that list somewhere. Um, but also, like, if I wasn't, I was looking to get those games, a new version of them. It's also on PC. Don't need to get a PS5. At our collective AAA studios all across the globe. Everything we do is driven and inspired by storytelling. As creators, PlayStation 5 gives us the opportunity to push the boundaries of storytelling. Even I'm not, uh, by the way, I know I'm going to get hate comments for this. So, first of all, I don't give a shit what you have to say. Second of all, I'm not saying... That, like, I'm not hating you for wanting a PS5 or wanting to play the best version of the games. It's very legitimate. I have the same reasons why I'm gonna, why I want to get an Xbox Series X, you know? It's the same argument both ways. I'm just more invested in the Xbox ecosystem, so that's just me personally. Um, so, I just, I know I'm gonna be using that console and playing those games the most. Um... And I have Game Pass and all this stuff too, so it's just, it's much more beneficial, like, I, I find more benefit going with that as my primary main 4K console, right? Um, there's no incentive for me personally to get a PS5 when I mainly use my PS4 for the odd exclusive game. Like, just playing through that story and enjoying that, and then I move over to my Xbox, my PC, or my Switch. Um... Wait a minute, WAIT A MINUTE! WAIT A MINUTE! <laughs> Take back everything I said, hold on! <laughs> I take it all back! Give me a PS5 now! <laughs> uh, leave whatever fucking comments you want, I don't care.
This music does not seem to fit what this game is. <laughs> is this a ra this is a racing game, right? What is happening? <laughs> it's Gran Turismo. <laughs> what is happening? Wait, wait, I know the song. Do I know the song? This is such a shift here. Gran Turismo games always look incredible. But so has Forza and, you know, Project Gotham Racing. <laughs> Some of these shots actually don't look the best. But the cars look great. I can't, uh... I never get into Gran Turismo games. I want to mute. Can I? I'm muting this. Oh, my mouse is lost. I'm muting this because I'm. I've already gotten like six copyright strikes on this trailer alone. <laughs> okay, there we go. Why is the volume so? That's so low here. Fuck it! I can't get over the Wolverine. There's a Wolverine game. Hold on. Wait a minute, give me give me all fucking Marvel. Just do it, do it all. One who could even beat me. This was the last Wolverine game I played. It, it wasn't bad. Give me a new one, I'm excited. I knew Spider Man, right? I was I was thinking about this the other day. It was a Spider Man game. Or Spider Verse game? Is Venom? Oh yeah, because they teased Venom. Oh, he looks fucking great. This is the reason to get a PS5. Spider-Man 2? Call it Spider-Man. There's already an established comic for that. 2023. Alright, 2023, getting a PS5. Playing Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine. Yeah, I don't, I don't have claws. I got the Wolverine game. This is there's a sticker here. This is X Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition. Hundred percent of this got all the achievements. It was this is the hardest boss fight I've ever had uh, had to deal with. It was Deadpool. So this is based off the movie. Movie not so great. Game pretty good. You know, but to choose one of the two, play the game. But. Neither are fantastic. <laughs> this, this is like one of those stickers that just doesn't come off. I already ripped off three layers of this. Time is running out. The prophecy say you got a war. Ragnarok. War is coming. 
My story doesn't end hiding in these woods. I should be out there, finding out who I am, who Loki is. I will not allow you to go fight the gods. I don't want to fight anymore. I just want answers. And if those answers lead to war with Asgard? Maybe that's what Mother wants. You do not know what Mother wanted. <laughs> I'd recognize that dour expression anywhere. <laughs> no, that's it. Up his sleeve, we haven't dared to consider. What if there was someone who could help us? You mean Tyr, the old god of war in these lands, who is dead? Well, for a dead man, Odin seemed pretty keen on seeing he wasn't found. For most people, this is the game to own a PS5 for. Um. I haven't played any of the God of War games, so. We're trying to stop Ragnarok to help people. This is another series I gotta catch up on. I was considering <coughs> getting the um, remake games on Vita. Is not the only way. Or a uh, PS3. But I think those are hard to find and they're like expensive. You see. God of War Ragnarok. Well, some of them. Cool. <clears throat> Is that their ending game? Or is there more? There's more to the showcase, alright. More updates in 10, 9, why? Why the countdown? You got Wolverine and Spider-Man 2 already sold on PS5 2023 when I'm getting it. Why are why are there so mo so many uh, warnings? <laughs> There's another copyright claim. The vampire game, by the way, playing on PC. I'm not getting a PS5 for that. <laughs> PlayStation Showcase. We've got more info and updates coming right now, and I'm in fact joined by no less than PlayStation Studios head Herman Hulst. Uh, Herman, really strong showing here from PlayStation Studios tonight, including an awesome new look at GT7 and finally a release date. GT7 is coming in March, and I don't think fans are going to be disappointed with what. Is this really their biggest game franchise still? Gran Turismo. Is we're pulling from the entire history of the franchise, taking some of the best features into GT7, GT campaign, arcade missions, all that good stuff. 
And, uh, you know, I got a chance to play and it just looks and plays sensationally. The haptics, the vibration. Because I feel like F1 is like the biggest the racing game the, now. The different cars. I'll tell you That's the one I one hear about all the time. I personally time. really, really liked is the braking variations through the adaptive triggers that really kind of makes you, it makes you feel like you're an incredible racer. And for me, that's great. Great to hear that about GT7. I can't wait to play that, but I also the most really popular to talk about racing Insomniac. video games right now. I mean, this is a studio that is absolutely on fire. The Forza. Okay, I guess this is, this could be with the uh, Microsoft. Morales, Ratchet and Clank, a rift apart. Gran Turismo is right under Forza on Ranker. In the form of Marvel. But yeah, Need for Speed. I feel like more people play those. Wolverine. Crew. It's kind of a shock. You work really closely with Insom, Herman. So what can you tell us about just? why uh insom gets so fired up about the marvel universe I mean, so wait so in insomniac is making wolverine so productive and i think the team in insomniac they're really always challenging themselves to raise the bar with their approach to storytelling and, and craftsmanship i, I can't i can't imagine how good a proper wolverine game is going to be because the mediocre movie tie-in ones were great were pretty good amongst their team and that collaboration that that also extends to the to, to the way that they work with other PlayStation teams. But the, so I think there was an X2 game, like for the second X-Men movie. And that, collaboration that was all f was mostly featured on Wolverine. That was good too. I remember playing the hell out of that one on PS2. There was a lot of stealth, that was cool. Action, visual fidelity. I think Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be a spectacular showpiece for gaming. And they're also so thrilled to then bring gamers an emotional and oh, yeah, yeah. journey into Marvel's Wolverine. I think that PlayStation fans are really going to be in for a treat over the next few years. Very cool, very exciting times. Spider-Man, Wolverine, Guardians of the Galaxy, Midnight Suns. Herman, what can you tell us about the Mario games the studio is going with? happening? You know, like many of the fans, I'm personally really, really invested in the relationship between Kratos and Atreus. We got to see in the trailer that there's some real tension brewing between them as Ragnarok approaches. So, you know, I can't wait for players to see how that relationship between them evolves. And you gotta trust me when I say that Santa Monica Studio have prepared quite a few twists and turns for players as they set up the finale of the Norse saga in God of War Ragnarok. We're going to get an update on God of War Ragnarok from Santa Monica Studio here in just a moment. But before you go, Herman, want to get your take on Horizon Forbidden West. Now, we've learned that this one is coming out in February. I am sure that by this point you have played it. So what has jumped out to you? What can you tell us about the game? I've had a chance to play the game on, on PS4 and PS5, and it looks great on both. For, for PS5, no, the level of detail on the Aloy, her kids... If that's true, I'm getting it on PS4. Even more amazing because the environments have so much going on, too. That's great. From the ruins of San Francisco to those new... You're getting the upgrade on uh, PS5. They reversed that decision, so... Before, you had to... The combat in the game offers so much variety. You had to pay for the upgrade, but now they're saying you get a free upgrade. When you combine these together, that comes in really handy uh, when you're dealing with the new machines. On PS5, the haptic feedback on the controller, I think, in my mind, really you know, adds that's a good point. Experience, you know, Get it for the haptic feedback. And, and, and the other ammo. You know, the team at Gorilla, I know them so well. I'm super proud of them. They're creating something incredibly special. I just can't wait for gamers to get the next chapter of Aloy's adventure in their hands. Thanks for the update, Herman. We're joined now by Eric and Corey from Santa Monica Studio. And I wanted to check in with you two on the big announce we saw just a few minutes ago, God of War Ragnarok. We finally got our first big look at it. And actually, Eric, I wanted to start with you. You've been involved with every single God of War, including 2018's God of War. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, Sid. I've been with the studio since uh, 2004 uh, in many different capacities, working with both Santa Monica and Randy at Dawn on the God of War franchise. And... Uh, I don't know why, but they thought it'd be a good idea to say, hey, do you want to direct this one? And so <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm directing God of War Ragnarok, or as Corey likes to call it, never heard of it. Um, so that's the update on that. So Eric, uh, why the shift in leadership on God of War Ragnarok? Um, it's always been a tradition here at Santa Monica to change the directors across <laughs> the games. You know, we've had really good success with that. <laughs> All the answers so far are just director, like... You know, rightfully so, he's pretty damn good at what he does. So that's kind of what it is. The important thing for us is to be able to kind of get a fresh <coughs> perspective each time 
but also, you know, a fresh pair of legs in the sense that you're really exhausted at the end of finishing one of these things. So you got to con somebody else into doing it like him. <laughs> so, Eric, what aesthetics? I can't believe the answers to these questions. It's like, I guess what I'm getting at is like, why? How did how'd you get like, well, I guess they trusted me. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like, why'd they choose you? It's like. Well, that's just the standard procedure. I don't know. I'm probably not the best choice for the job, but you know, that's just the way it works. Like, I don't know if that... I don't know if that instills confidence in the excitement for this game, you know? It's like stuff and letting go of things, you know, it's a, a very difficult kind of human condition that we all deal with. And uh, we kind of want to arrive at that by taking like slices of life or family, you know, drama, if you will, and kind of juxtapose that against big Norse backdrop. And, you know, at the end, we just want to have an ending that feels very, you know, surprising and inevitable based on all those things. But it's, it's kind of, you know, I'm from the Midwest, so like slice of life, very common mundane things are just as interesting as big world events and so we try to collide those things together to, you know make an experience that's very worthy of the god of war name so with the game officially being called god of war ragnarok um i guess it, it doesn't take a genius to think that perhaps ragnarok factors into this game in some manner C can you confirm that eric yeah i mean you can't call the game god of war ragnarok and not have ragnarok happen in the game so you know it's it's gonna happen we're gonna destruction have a series with it um, and I think Chris Judge said it best in the announced trailer last year. Prepare yourselves. The last game ended with a teaser of sorts for Thor, and I just got to know, was that Thor's voice? Oh, I didn't even put I didn't even put that together. That was definitely Thor's voice uh, that we heard in the trailer. Uh, Thor is being played by Ryan Hurst, um, which you might know him from uh, Sons of Anarchy. He played Opie, one of my favorite characters ever, um, and we're just delighted to have him come play in the God of War sandbox and uh, his take on Thor. And our take visually on Thor is very different than the, the hunky Australian you might know. You know he's much closer <laughs> to the uh, Norse mythology version. You know, he's this big, burly, almost hedonistic man-child, red hair, you know, left-handed, just, just a little off-kilter than the Thor that a lot of people know right now. So I can't wait for people to experience more of that when the game's done. Cool. We also heard the name Odin in tonight's trailer. So I imagine if we're going to experience Ragnarok, Odin's going to have to play a pretty big role here, right? Definitely. I mean, Odin is the all-father of all the realms, so he's going to show up when Ragnarok happens. Um, We're very, very happy to have uh, Mr. Richard Schiff come on to play Odin for us. Uh, you may know him as Toby from the West Wing. Um, this was one that we never thought was going to happen. It was like kind of a shot in the dark, and uh, he got back to us, and we walked him around the mocap volume, and he was just like, I've never done anything like this before. Let's do it. And uh, so the kind of rest is history, so I can't wait for people to experience that and see how he factors in. And, it's a very different take again, much like Thor. You know, he's like a old man who's just kind of busy with his own things and doing whatever he wants, and uh, he's and he doesn't live in a castle or anything like that. So it's it's a again a different take, kind of what we do. We just take what's known and curveball it a little bit, and you know make it special. We also saw a couple of new characters tonight. So what can you tell us about them? Are you talking about the little squid? <laughs> oh no, you're talking about Tyr, Tyr the big guy. Yeah, yeah, he's the the Norse god of war. Um, and uh, Curtis and Trace have finally found him. We, we talked a lot about him in 2018, so we were like, well, we might as well show him to the people. And then the last character we saw at the trailer, you know, like with the little wink and smile from Anger Boda, she's one of the last remaining giants, um, and her story is pretty amazing and how it fits into the world of God of War. Um, Tyr is being played by uh, Ben Prendergast, um, who's been completely absorbed in the role, even though he is not a giant as Tyr is. Um, and then uh, Anger Boat is being played by uh, Leia De Leon Hayes, who's a complete treasure on set. She's been amazing. Watching her chemistry with the other characters has been amazing. And she's one of the last giants that's living. So we have those characters and a few more. And, you know, there's a lot of different monsters he saw in there. And there's been so many talented people at the studio building this trailer and putting it together. I just want to give a shout out to the team. I love you guys. You know, I wish you could be here doing this interview with me. I wish you were all behind me right now at the studio. Um, that would have been completely amazing. And, you know, lastly, to our fans, uh, we have a saying at the studio that we are fans of our fans, and I cannot wait to watch all the tweets, the messages, the reaction videos that you guys put out, and, and our, our team to be able to take that into heart and uh, just get excited and hyped and then uh, use that to push us through to finish the game for you guys. So thank you very much.
Now, Corey, we <laughs> haven't heard a whole lot out of you here tonight. So now that we know you're not directing God of War Ragnarok, I was hoping maybe you could give us a little clue about what you may or may not be working on next. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You'd like me to just spill the beans and tell you everything that's going on right now. We're actually doing a bunch of stuff. It's really exciting, all the things that we're doing, and you're tempted to know what is this, but I don't really have anything I can talk about right now specifically, mostly because we're, we're really focused on God of War Ragnarok, that I am incredibly excited that I finally understand that that's what everyone was saying, God of War Ragnarok. I was way off. I was thinking it was something else that they were talking about. <laughs> I think we'll we'll wait to, to get any deeper into anything else until later. We'll talk again, Sid. All right. Well, thank you, Corey, and thank you, Eric. And next up, we have Ryan Treadwell. He's the lead producer at Aspire. And wouldn't you know, just a little while ago, we got the announcement of a remake for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. So Ryan, a lot of remakes so tonight, is, too. Is this like a, a, a remaster of the original game, or what's going on here? That was remake. So much more, Sid. This is a complete remake of this beloved. Does it Star say Wars remastered or does it Star say remake? Republic remake. We are rebuilding from the Come ground on. up while maintaining that integrity of story and character from the original. So, Ryan, how much of a remake are we talking about here? I mean, is this updating some graphics, adding some some higher resolution modes? Does it say remaster? Republic is a true class. Or does it uh, fucking say remake? <laughs> We want to honor that original story and make it as impactful for players today. In terms of the visuals, we have an opportunity to present this story with a much higher level of fidelity than was possible in the past, while making sure that we're being authentic to what players loved about that original game. So we know Aspire from bringing classic Star Wars games to modern consoles, uh, but this is a much bigger project than anything the studio's tackled before. So what can you tell me about the team behind the game? You're absolutely right. While Aspire has enjoyed a great relationship with Lucasfilm Games through our work bringing classic Star Wars games to new audiences on modern platforms, this project is on a completely different level to anything we have done before. That's why we knew we had to assemble the right team to do this project justice. We put together a team full of industry veterans from fan-favorite RPGs, even including the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It has been a really rewarding experience to assemble such a talented team to bring back an epic game. Of course, we're also working closely with the amazing teams at PlayStation and Lucasfilm Games. Together, we couldn't be more excited about what we'll be able to show you in the future. All of us are, of course, huge Star Wars fans too. One of the nice parts about building a team to make a big Star Wars game is the ability to instantly bond with all the new people of your favorite aspects of Star Wars. We all have different Star Wars memorabilia behind us in every call, and it always sparks up a good conversation. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Very exciting stuff, and I'm definitely dying to see more of that one. Thank you, Sid. It will be some time before we're ready to show more, but we're very excited about being able to reveal more in the future. All right, and that's it for our show. You can catch up on all the big news on PlayStation.blog and check out all the trailers from tonight's PlayStation Showcase on YouTube. Thanks for watching. PlayStation. All right, so that was the PlayStation Showcase. That was really good. There's a lot of cool games that showed off. Um, a lot of stuff I'm obviously excited for, like uh, the Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine. Wolverine! I'm excited for that stuff. Um, uh, a lot of the other stuff I know is going to be multi-platform. Uh, so I know it's not going to be a reason for me to get a PS5 per se. Uh, they might be console exclusive. So if I do uh, prefer to play them on a console and I get a PS5 for those other games I'm excited for, then I might, uh, I might look at getting, uh, I'll probably get the PS5 version. It's, it's likely, um, but I think I gravitate more towards PC for uh, multi-platform or, or console exclusive stuff that is available on PC. Um, if uh, the games that are out now or coming soon um that you know i have interest in that are also released on ps4 if it's not something like if there's not an exclusive for ps5 coming out in the immediate future like i'm just speaking to me personally uh my my personal experience and and um and um you know hype for this stuff um if it's for example uh horizon forbidden west it's also a uh, release on PS4. I have a PS4. Um, 
So I'm just going to play it on that. I, I, I don't like, I get why I would want a PS5 for the best experience. Um, but a game like that, uh, you know, it's, it's a one time game for me. Um, I don't, I don't really see myself replaying, um, Horizon, um, Zero Dawn, to be honest. I, I, like, I still haven't played the DLC. I'm looking forward to playing that and experiencing that. Um, but I don't know if I'll replay that game and then, like, keep replaying Forbidden West, you know? Um, so it's one of those, like, one-time games to play for the, the story and it's because it's a great game. It's an exclusive game. It's one I'm interested in, and I like the first one. Uh, but I'll play it on PS4. Uh, same with Miles Morales. Miles Morales. I have it on PS4. That is uh, one of the games up next after the Horizon DLC for me when I play that. Uh, that I'll I'll be playing on PS4. I get why it's best on PS5. Um, I wasn't gonna buy a PS5 for Miles Morales specifically, especially when I can play it on PS4 and it still plays fine on PS4 and I still experience that story and everything. Um, but there's obviously games that are that they were showcasing that are going to be exclusive to PS5, um, such as uh, I'm assuming Gran Turismo is gonna be exclusive to the ps5 i don't see why that game would come out on ps4 um but i'm i'm assuming that game's on ps5 exclusive god of war ragnarok oh no wait did they announce that they're it's coming to ps4 i think they might have if i'm remembering correctly that game might be coming out to ps4 i can't i'm not sure but they have to put spider-man 2 and and wolverine up maybe not wolverine i don't know i i imagine spider-man 2 is gonna be a ps5 exclusive um I know that Ratchet and Clank seems to be the big one uh, that I would say. Uh, that's a game that's just not going to come to PS uh, to PC. Uh, so it's always going to be a PS5 exclusive. You know, um, Horizon and all that might make the jump to PC, uh, just like the original game did. So for me, when I'm looking at what are the big, like, what's my primary ecosystem? Because that's really the new consoles I see more as convenience and, like, the best way to play the games you already own or have access to. Um, and you're invested in that ecosystem. So if you're already the, the PlayStation guy, if you already have uh, all this, uh, you know, investment in the PS4, you want to do the upgrade to PS5 because you're like, I'm getting all these games on this platform anyway. I'm going to choose the console that plays the best for me. Uh, for me, it's Xbox. I'm, I've been invested since the Xbox 360. Um, I have Game Pass uh, and, you know, uh, all, all ma- multi-platform stuff. I typically get PC or Xbox. Um, so I know like when I'm playing my game library um, and I want to connect it to like my 4K TV, or you know like get the best experience of performance out of it i'm going towards xbox not not to say i don't have the playstation console i have a ps4 i have the other ones whatever but my like you know primary best preferred way to play would be the xbox series x um and the reason why i would get a ps5 is for specific exclusives a lot of that stuff is just not there for me. Uh, the ones that are there are just not interest to me. And if they are, they're available on PS4 or PC. Um, so, yeah, for me, um, it looks like 2023 is the is the year I'm getting a PS5. Assuming my back no- backlog is still not horrible by then. Because maybe it'll be 2024 or later. <laughs> but... Uh, in terms of games in general, if you don't have a console, if you don't have a PC, and you're looking forward to what to playing something, and you're seeing the games that are coming out, um, there's a lot there for you. So yeah, there's a great showcase, a lot of big name games, and uh, we've been missing stuff like this from PlayStation. They've been showing like the one-off uh, directs or whatever they're calling uh, them, state of plays. They're called state of plays. I remember now. Uh, so they do state of plays for individual games lately, or indie games, which is great. But we haven't seen the big showcase stuff. They skipped E3. This seems like their E3 presentation. It was about an hour long, so uh, I think they usually go over that for uh, E3. But th- if this was their E3 showcase, you know, um, I-, I think it would have been a good showcase 
just comparatively because there wasn't a lot to compare it to. A lot of the showcases for E3 this year kind of lackluster, you know? So I, th- I feel like PlayStation would, I feel like if they showed this, they would have, you know, a, a lot of people would be talking about it. Um, but that said, uh, you know, like compared to the Xbox showcase, I, still, I think Xbox did a better job. If I'm comparing this in an E3 mindset, I know that's not what this is supposed to be, but this is essentially like the the big hitters were here. So this was like their E3 presentation to me. <laughs> that's what it seemed like. Um, anyway, I know my opinions are going to disagree with yours, and I have had to deal with this before. Um, so I can already feel you posting in the comments. Um, and misrepresenting or misunderstanding my words and then quoting them in a way that I've never said them, um, which is, again, something I've had to deal with. So just keep in mind, I don't care. Anyways, thank you for uh, watching. <laughs> if you're uh, what I do care is if this convinced you to get a PS5 or if there's any specific games that you're looking forward to, let me know in the comments down below. And Remember to check out my podcast channel, Spawn Trap. There's going to be group reactions, so you don't just get my annoying voice talking about stuff. You actually get some other people sharing their reactions to game announcements like this. Um, a lot more fun that way. I'll be honest. I prefer doing that. Um, anyways, on YouTube, thanks for watching.